let's talk about what 4 nanometer A16 means for Apple's M3 Max generation. We were all expecting a 5 nanometer process for Apple's A16, but no. Apple has shared a whole nanometer with the A16 using a 4 nanometer process for the first time. So, as Evan Rogers asks, I gave answers, what are your thoughts on A16? Let's talk about that. And did Apple lie to us about 4 nanometers? We'll come to that later. But first, we have benchmarks. Want the latest Apple news leaks and rumors? Subscribe and ring the bell. Geekbench gives us 1887 for single core performance and 5455 for multi core. Now that's versus 1722 for the fastest performing A15 Bionic, which amusingly comes courtesy of the iPhone SE. That's the cheap one, scoring about 15 points more than the iPhone 13 Pro Max, presumably for giggles. Multicore is 4675 in the iPhone 13 Pro Max 2. So that's about 9.5% faster in single core and 16.7% faster in multi-core, which is pretty respectable. The iPhone 13 was about 12% faster than the 12, and when the same generational leap was then scaled up to M1 versus M2, it gave the M2 about 17.7% faster performance, given the extra performance cores involved. Now the 4 nanometer A16 uses Apple's latest generation Everest performance cores and sawtooth efficiency cores, which will also be the architecture at the heart of the M3 if past form is anything to go by and it typically is. That means the M3 generation could well be around 21% faster than the M2, and these gains get even bigger when scaling up to the M3 Pro, M3 Max, and Ultra chips, whilst also consuming less power because of the smaller node size too. What we've not seen yet is the graphics performance for this generation in terms of metal tests, but once they're in reviewers' hands, I'm sure that won't take too long to leak out either. I'll keep you posted. By all accounts though, even though Apple is marketing this as a 4 nanometer SOC, it's actually TSMC's 5 nanometer N4 generation, which is a very confusing name, which appears to be uh, more of a stepping stone. It's more dense than previous chips, with Apple squeezing in an extra billion transistors according to their event slides, and there's a decent chance that the M series chips for this will actually be produced on the 3 nanometer process for M3, and I'll tell you why. Although M3 will be the most numerous of the M series chips by a very long margin, because they go into iPads Pro, iPads Air, MacBook Air, which is the best selling Mac, Mac Mini, and potentially others, there will be far, far fewer of those than anything that you would be needing for even just the Pro iPhones. So making those A16 chips on the far more reliable, larger node probably makes a huge amount of sense in terms of yields. But if M3 really is a three nanometer chip, even with the lower yields, that could make the performance jump even bigger and or run cooler, so the performance can be sustained for much longer, even when rendering unrealistically taxing 8K Canon RAW footage on a fanless MacBook Air. Because real world testing is vitally important, you know. As I've said from the start, I don't expect the three nanometer chips to come to the M2 series at all, even in the higher end chips with their lower volumes, but look out for M3 at WWDC in 2023 in Apple's MacBook Air and hopefully not a 13 inch MacBook Pro because that laptop really doesn't need to exist. It would be great though if Apple could align the iPad Pro with the M3 launch and the new iMac and the Mac Mini with these chips inside as well. I mean, as soon as we're through all of the redesigns on the cards, it makes sense that the chip releases should be just driving the release schedule. Apple hasn't slowed down on their core designs, being refreshed every single year, so I don't see any reason that that wouldn't translate across to their M-series chips using those cores too. Let me know though down in the comments what you think about Apple's future Mac chips and what is your next Mac you have your eye on. Thanks to the Patreons for their support, they've literally kept me afloat while I was between jobs in the last couple of months. Join them at iCaveDave.com forward slash Patreon. Want the latest Apple news leaks and rumors? Subscribe and ring the bell.